president on the run. The absurdity of his corruption was amazing. Billions stolen. Al Jazeera's investigative unit has obtained a cache of secret files. It sounds like an agreement between criminal bosses. You can sign it with your blood. A nation robbed with the help of Western banks. They use London as a safe haven. It's a kind of business, you know. We reveal how Ukraine is being robbed for a second time under the nose of the authorities. We simply didn't have confirmation. And this looks like a confirmation. The proceeds go to an oligarch in hiding, a man fueling a war fought by Russian separatists in Ukraine. It just shows the way these guys do business, the genius of it, really. The information you've presented is what I call the pipe through which dirty money from Russia, Ukraine, and other countries all flow through. During the uprising, Kiev's musicians headed to Independence Square alongside thousands of protesters. Among them was opera trainer Tatiana Sachevska. The president had refused to sign an agreement to bring Ukraine closer to Europe. The goal of revolution was not only striving towards the EU, the goal was also to have the fair play and the fair rules of the game, and the revolution was against corruption. For three months, Kiev's Independence Square became a battlefield. Over a hundred people lost their lives. Then, one February night, Ukraine's president began to move house. President Viktor Yanukovych fled his country. With help from Russian special forces, he was flown by helicopter to Moscow. For Tatiana, Ukraine's leaders are like villains in a comic opera. The day he ran away from the country, the entire Ukrainian treasury and its accounts had a few thousand dollars. So the point is that entire treasury was robbed. Soon after the revolution, Ukraine's people discovered how their president had been living. The extent, the sort of absurdity of his corruption was amazing. It's a six-story log cabin, I think the biggest log cabin in the world, set in a frankly amazing estate. It's so enormous that if you're going to walk around it, you're not going to get around it in a day. Previously, the palace was hidden from view, even on satellite maps. Now, a nationalist group runs guided tours of this monument to corruption.
плюс столики, квіточки і так далі. Ну, 1600-700 доларів. Стенвей з копією автографа Джона Леннона. Це другий екземпляр з цих 25 штук. І тут у нас спортивний зал, в якому ніхто ніколи не займався. На всякий случай було создано, що би було. Кожен день до тисячі людей приходило на роботу офіційно. Але ми не рахуємо охорон. В сутки об'єкт по документах обходився поза 100 тисяч доларів. The palace still guards a secret, the name of its real owner. Yanukovych did not keep money on his name. Even his main house, where he spent the last years of his life in Ukraine, it was registered on the charity fund, not on Yanukovych himself. Behind that charity, a dizzying web of companies based in tax havens around the world. I'm Will Jordan. I've come to Kiev, the Ukrainian capital. Al Jazeera's investigative unit has obtained a drive filled with hundreds of documents about Yanukovych's network. Bank statements, contracts and emails from 2011 through the revolution until 2015. They place Viktor Yanukovych, the ultimate Eastern European oligarch, at the helm of a global corruption network. This investigation is about how that network still operates today. And through one crooked contract, we see how oligarchs do business, often with the unwitting assistance of Western banks. We've called it the quick pace deal. Unbelievable. It sounds like an agreement between criminal bosses. You can sign it with your blood. <laughs> By most estimates, Yanukovych stole billions. Ukrainian investigators traced and froze 1.5 billion. A Cyprus-based company called QuickPace Limited holds $160 million of that in cash and bonds. But prosecutors froze this money because it's stolen. It can't be legally bought nor sold. You can't trade uh, sisters. It's the point of seizing them, that you can't trade them. As a lawyer, I read this document and I understand that it's not a legal document. I wouldn't expect any court to enforce such a document. It just shows the way these guys do business. I mean, the genius of it, really. The quick pace deal involves two oligarchs agreeing to buy the company and its 160 million in frozen assets from a mysterious seller. The contract is unsigned, but our evidence indicates the deal went ahead. They treat quick pace like buying a bankrupt company and agree a knockdown price of just $30 million. They throw in a private jet as part of the payment. This is a really interesting discovery. This is distressed debt, basically. You get these companies in the city of London who, if someone's refusing to pay their debt, they buy it for, you know, 20p on the pound and then do their utmost to get it back and make a profit on it. The oligarchs would make a clean $130 million profit. They believe they can unfreeze the assets, or as they call it, remove the arrest and pocket the money. They just need to persuade a judge to lift the freeze. If you have influence over the courts, which you do in a corrupt jurisdiction like Ukraine, you can then use that influence to try and release the assets and make your money out of it. The majority of judges in Ukraine, they are themselves engaged in corruption. They are still those appointed under Yanukovych.
We've gathered evidence that establishes which oligarchs are trying to make illicit profits from the quick paste deal. We've shown this to investigators, including John Benton, the former head of the International Corruption Unit at Britain's National Crime Agency. These are really, really complex investigations. You've got to go through thousands and thousands and thousands of documents. It's following the money and working out, essentially, the route the money takes. It appears that QuickPace Limited was part of a massive embezzlement and money laundering network under the Yanukovych regime. Is it legal to be trading frozen assets or to be planning for them moving? It's a criminal offence. The whole idea is I've frozen the asset because I think it's the proceeds of crime. It's like trading in stolen goods that have been taken by the police. You're putting the cash in the getaway car, aren't you? Our documents reveal that buyer one in the quick paste deal is Alexander Onyshenko, who operates behind offshore company Fastelo Trading Limited, your typical Ukrainian oligarch. Oligarch is a term that most people didn't know 20 years ago. It's kind of come out of the Russian system, out of the Russian privatization program, and these are extremely rich people. He loves horses. He's a flamboyant oligarch. He likes spending money on expensive things, like they all do. He sponsored the Miss Ukraine contest and partied with the stars. Pamela Anderson, Paris Hilton, Jean-Claude Van Damme. Anishinko, like a lot of Ukrainians, made money in the gas business. I started to produce gas in Ukraine. Actually, that I did uh, one of the biggest company in Ukraine that was sold three years ago. Onoshenko was seeking asylum in Europe and agreed to be interviewed because he believed it would help clear his name. At first, we didn't say that we knew about the secret quick pace deal. He was happy to talk about his famous friends. You know Donald Trump? Yeah, he's doing horse competition in um, Palm Beach. Also, he was uh, the owner of this contest, Miss Universe. He did once this in Moscow, then I met him there. So we have a good relationship with him. Our document reveals buyer two in the quick pace deal, Pavel Fuchs. His company, Dorchester International Incorporated. He's a real estate tycoon who featured in a Russian business program. Ime Pavel Fuchs. Компания Moss City Group. Семейное положение. Женат. Двое детей. Хобби. Большой теннис. Иностранные языки. Fuchs promotes a hard man image. Like buyer one, Fuchs is friends with now US President Donald Trump. He's negotiated with him several times since 2004, but never completed a deal to build a Trump hotel in Moscow. President Putin has honored Fuchs for his contribution to the Russian economy. Fuchs owns several prestigious properties in the Russian capital. He built this complex in partnership with the powerful son-in-law of former Russian president Boris Yeltsin. Another partner was a Kazakh businessman, later sentenced to jail over a multi-billion dollar fraud. He's a tough boss. Mr. and Mrs. Fuchs publish social media snaps with a high-profile jeweler and his wife. Jacob Arabo was jailed for two years in 2008 in a US money laundering case. Fuchs socializes with influential politicians, 
a Russian MP from President Putin's party, now a senior banker, the mayor of Ukraine's second city, Kharkiv, left in a wheelchair after a mafia-style assassination attempt. What's interesting about him is that the extent to which he shows that the separation between Ukraine and Russia can be a bit skin deep. The elites of both Ukraine and Russia, for them, it's basically the same country. The money flows backwards and forwards. The business deals go backwards and forwards. A recent leak of offshore company documents, the Panama Papers, establishes Fuchs at the helm of a huge global business empire. It begins with his offshore company, Dorchester International Incorporated, registered in St. Kitts and Nevis. It has holdings in companies all over the globe, indirectly in Golden Eagle Trust in Jersey. Owned by billionaire Vijay Malia, today facing extradition to India on fraud charges, which he denies. Another link, mining in Tanzania and Cameroon. To palm oil billionaires in Malaysia. Even state-run pharmaceuticals in Cuba. They all operate as a kind of transnational clan. And they'll have their lawyers in Cyprus, they'll have their money in Latvia. It's a, an international structure which they've created since the fall of the Soviet Union, which is very, very resilient and very hard to penetrate. Since the collapse of the Soviet Union a quarter century ago, Ukraine's been caught between Russia and the West. After the 2014 revolution, a pro-Western government's been in place. It's launched a war on corruption, fought by a national anti-corruption bureau built on American and European money. The bureau is well known for arresting low-level judges and civil servants and counting out their cash on camera but it hasn't got any high-level convictions. It appears that the revolution that toppled Yanukovych did not remove the oligarchs who served him. We прекрасно понимали, кто кто включался в этот процесс, что будет очень непросто. Buyer one in the quick pace deal, Alexander Onoshenko, is on the run in Western Europe with his riches. The Ukraine government says he swindled them out of a hundred million dollars on a gas deal. Onoshenko says the president told him to bribe MPs and has now turned against him. Yeah, I'm wanted in Ukraine, that's why I'm uh, now in Europe. Actually, this case is political motivation case. Would you say you're against corruption? Yeah. But you've paid bribes, you've been corrupt. I, I've been not corrupt. I did just uh, instruction what the uh, president say. And uh, in our country, there is not other way. There is no other way. Onoshenko is the anti-corruption bureau's most wanted fugitive. They're hunting him for the gas swindle. They raided his office in March 2016, even had his mother arrested in Madrid. During that raid, we understand they picked up a copy of our document, the quick pace deal. Despite this, they seem to be doing little to bring the oligarchs involved to justice. In the future, Anishenko and together with the Russian businessman Fuchs, they bought these price books. Well, the role is not established in this scheme. Just because they are the two companies together with Anishenko. Buyer two, Pavel Fuchs, a man whose business empire spans the globe. We traced some of his property assets. Mrs. Fuchs is a social media star regularly in London. 
the photographer always takes pictures in the same place. The upmarket Belgravia neighborhood, near the Spanish embassy, and at home sweet home. We located the building. Property records show it was purchased in 2012 for 25 million pounds or around 40 million dollars by another company based in the British Virgin Islands called Latina Associates Limited, using a mortgage from Barclays Bank. The Panama Papers leak reveals that Latina Associates is owned by Mrs. Fuchs and Mr. Fuchs's company, Dorchester International. London is a favorite destination for many oligarchs and their money. London is an international financial center. We don't just have the professional services that can be hijacked and used. We also have all the trimmings where you might want to spend your money. In London, you can buy anything. You buy yourself a mansion in Kensington. You buy yourself a load of fine art at Sotheby's. You buy yourself a yacht at the London Boat Show. This building in central London houses a company called Chesterfield Group. It's what's called a company formation agent, a crucial tool for any oligarch such as Pavel Fuchs. For a small fee, they'll set up a company for you and you can remain anonymous. It can be offshore with an address that's not yours. The named director won't be you, the named secretary won't be you. You simply control it in the background while your nominee cutouts protect your identity. If anyone ever comes to ask them a question, they just sort of throw their hands up in the air and say, I don't know, I was just a nominee director. Hello, is this Chesterfield Group? I came to ask you some questions about Pavel Fuchs. And so effectively, you have these cutout characters that depersonalize and distance the money from any of the real perpetrators of the situation. We emailed and called you, but you didn't respond. You can create a company in the UK for 13 pounds, and it takes you, I've done it, about nine minutes. Hello? No one checks the information that you provide, literally no one. And there are 350,000 companies created by company formation agents in the UK every year. This office and Chesterfield Group are closely linked to Fuchs. Chesterfield's building is owned by a company based in the British Virgin Islands, Gerbera Group bought in 2015 for around $5 million with a Barclays mortgage. Gerbera Group is owned by Fuchs's company, Dorchester International. Chesterfield has branches in Cyprus, Isle of Man, Ireland, the Bahamas, and of course, London. In many cases, Dorchester International is the named director. If you've got a company formation agent registered and that company formation agent is forming companies for you, then that's immediately suspicious. It's a huge, huge alarm bell. Chesterfield appears to be a captive company formation agent. In other words, creating companies for its owner. This makes perfect sense. I mean, if I was an oligarch, I'd do that. Yeah, own your own company formation agent. Why not? Sell them to your mates. Give them, here you go. It's like, it's like a Christmas present. Here you go, here's a London company with a bank account. It's brilliant. In part two, we confront Alexander Onoshenko, one of the buyers of QuickPace. So there is like kind of business that you can buy cheap and you try to, to fix the problem to, to make the money. And we reveal a man believed to be the seller of the frozen assets. He is unbalanced and unhinged. He's a vengeful person, unprincipled and ruthless. In part one, how former Ukrainian President Viktor Yanukovych stole billions. $1.5 billion was frozen. We have obtained documents that expose a plot in 2015 to steal again $160 million of that money. It's held in a company called QuickPace Limited. It involves two oligarchs, Pavel Fuchs and Alexander Onoshenko, planning to buy QuickPace's frozen assets at a knockdown price. 
unbelievable. It sounds like an agreement between criminal bosses. You can sign it with your blood. <laughs> now we reveal where the stolen money is destined and the identity of the reclusive third oligarch believed to be selling the frozen assets. He is unbalanced and unhinged. He's a vengeful person, unprincipled and ruthless. The story of our documents takes us back to the heyday of the corruption of Ukraine's former president Yanukovych, deeper into one network of his offshore companies. It traces the path of hundreds of millions of dollars out of Ukraine from 2011 to his escape in 2014. Through foreign bank accounts and into the pockets of Yanukovych and his cronies. Since Ukraine became independent in 1991, it has been essentially looted by its elites again and again and again. And the tactics they use are essentially always identical. Faceless lawyers, accountants, and bankers helped pass hundreds of millions of dollars around the network. Some as loans referenced redistribution of means, some as payments for building materials, home electronics, some for cars, motorbikes, even parquet flooring. The philosophy of money launderers is to create a situation where the money has moved through so many different companies in so many different countries, um, in so many different accounts, thereby effectively laundering it because nobody has the resources to figure it out. While he was still in power, the Yanukovych network used quick pace to launder money, sometimes moving relatively small amounts via complex paths with the help of Western banks. One document showed a payment of $4.4 million made by QuickPays from its nominal home as a Cyprus registered company. The money was held in a QuickPays account in Vienna with Austria's Meinl Bank. It was wired to an account in Frankfurt with Commerce Bank, on to Deutsche Bank in New York. It ended up at Baltic International Bank in Latvia in the account of a shell company, Foxtron Networks Limited. Foxtron, like QuickPace, is registered in Cyprus. None of the banks appear to have raised a red flag, what's called a suspicious activity report. It's very easy for a bank to fill out a suspicious activity report. They just effectively press a button. The trouble is, um, who's digesting those this suspicious activity reports? And the answer is, um, in many cases, nobody. The documents linking QuickPace to Foxtron Networks in turn link QuickPace to one of the world's highest profile money laundering scandals. It was discovered by Russian accountant Sergei Magnitsky. He was working for an investment firm based in Moscow and run by Bill Browder. Sergei exposed it. He was then arrested, tortured, and killed in prison. The Russian government says Magnitsky died of natural causes and accuses Browder of the fraud. Browder claims Russian officials stole $230 million in state funds. A huge quarter billion dollar Russian government embezzlement scheme. Synonymous with injustice and corruption in Russia. It's a frightening reminder of how quickly money can disappear. Our documents reveal that Foxtron Networks had been wired money by QuickPace in March 2014. We then discovered that Foxtron was owned by one of the companies at the heart of the Magnitsky affair, Final Limited. Final Limited is one of the central um, parts of the apparatus. It's like the spigot on the pipe. Final is effectively a nominee company that is the director for a number of very crucial um, points in this money laundering network. Both QuickPace and the company it wired money to, Foxtron Networks, are registered in Cyprus. Rich Ukrainians funnel their money offshore to Cyprus and then onwards, beyond, and then bring it back again. So it looks like foreign investment, so you can't really tell who owns it. 
In the QuickPace deal, another Cyprus company, Pronta Service Limited, is named as the seller of the $160 million in frozen assets. But Pronta Service is just a cutout and nominee shareholder. It owns the assets on paper, but the real owner is hiding behind it. Christina Saris is the named secretary of Pronta Service, a Cyprus-based lawyer and offshore expert. Saris refused our request for an interview or to divulge the name of the person behind Pronta Service. But we tracked her down. In a secretly recorded conversation, she confirmed that QuickPace had been sold. Looking at a company called QuickPace. It's no longer with us, QuickPace. The client sold me. I remember it because it was an office closing and it was a nightmare. The Cyprus company registry shows QuickPace was transferred to one of Pavel Fuchs's many companies, Evermore Property Holdings, with the help of his company formation agent, Chesterfield. The leaked documents also provide evidence that the QuickPace deal was done, or at least that its first phase began. Pavel Fuchs apparently made a payment from a London bank, a transfer, $2 million, from Barclays Canary Wharf. Deutsche Bank in New York was used to move the money. They passed it to an offshore company with an account in Latvia and a mystery owner. The money went through, no red flags. Western banks have had a hard time making money over the last few years. So when somebody shows up and says, I'd like to set up an account with $100 million, they're going to have to look for a pretty good reason not to set up that account. Other documents in the leak lead us to a British village north of London. Under British law, there's a type of company that allows foreign owners to avoid tax and scrutiny. It's called a limited liability partnership. Companies are brilliant. Some people call them getaway cars for corrupt money. I have heard them better described as armor plating. One of the companies is registered here. This is the official office of a company worth hundreds of millions of dollars, Fincor Resources LLP. According to bank statements leaked to us, Fincor made $328 million in just six months of 2013. But in public accounts filed with UK authorities, Fincor claimed it made less than 7,000. It looks like fraud, so we came to ask about it. The managers at the address of the registered office had refused our request for an interview. Hello there. My name is Will Jordan. I work with Al Jazeera. We're doing a, an investigation into uh, Ukraine. This Hertfordshire office has registered over 1,500 companies, so the people who work here just run a postbox service. With the director, secretary and address all being proxies, finding out who really owns a company can be almost impossible. If you own something in your own name, then you can just look on the company register or the property register and say, oh, there you go, it's Oliver's house. But if I own that house in a company, a British company, and if my British company is owned by, let's say, a Cypriot company, and if my Cypriot company is owned by, let's say, a Panamanian company, and if my Panamanian company is owned by a Nevis company, then if you want to find out who owns this house, you have to go to every one of those jurisdictions and ask them who owns that company. Hello? Hello? I wanted to ask about a couple of companies. Fincor Resources? Fincor Resources features in the files. Its nominee directors were also involved in the Magnitsky scandal. A Latvian citizen called Yuri Wittmann signs the papers for Fincor. He's just a cutout for the person who really owns and controls the company. Another director is Stan Gorin. Again, a cutout whose name is regularly used as a frontman by money launderers. 
These named directors may be paid for their nominee role, but are likely ignorant of any fraud. The information you've presented is what I call the pipe. This is the pipe through which dirty money from Russia, Ukraine, and other countries in that part of the world all flow through. These are all effectively part of the same criminal operation. The pipeline leads to Moscow. As well as the links with the Magnitsky affair, the documents feature hundreds of emails from lawyers based here. They're so concerned to conceal the name of their client, they write in cryptic language. Good evening. February 26, 2015. Put the book on the top shelf. Technical task. Read the book and give a positive review of it. Cancel the decision of three floors to leave in force the decision of one and two floors. Sincerely, is it agreed with my supervisor? But who is the supervisor? We found the answer buried deep in a key document. A loan agreement shows QuickPace was used to put up collateral by a company called Vetec Media Invest in order to borrow huge funds in October 2013. Vetek belongs to Sergei Kachenko, known as the baby-faced gas king of Ukraine. By age 27, he was worth $400 million. Former President Yanukovych apparently treated him like a wallet. Kachenko gave cash to the president whenever he needed it. He has given control of a chunk of the gas trade. He made a lot of money for himself, and then he cut back most of it then to his political patrons, which was, you know, Yanukovych or Yanukovych's son. There's more evidence pointing to Kachenko as the seller. A lawyer called Boris Gutsov appears in the emails. Russian business records show he's director of United Media Holdings. United Media used to belong to Sergei Kachenko. Kurchenko was just businessman, but I can say a very talented corrupt guy because he used very tricky schemes, very unusual schemes to steal money. Today, he's in hiding in Moscow, wanted in Ukraine, sanctioned in the US and Europe. His office is in a skyscraper complex developed by Pavel Fuchs's companies. Two of his former drivers told us more about him. Kachenko is always asking when we will arrive. If you don't answer immediately, you'll be fired. It was the worst job I ever had. He swears, he screams at his employees, he fires two to three people every month. He's very inadequate. The drivers are worried that they'll be in danger if their former boss finds out they've been talking to us. He is unbalanced and unhinged. He's a vengeful person, unprincipled and ruthless. Kachenko's only given three interviews to journalists. One was Ivan Golunov. It was a unusual interview. Мы поехали на лифте, открылись двери лифта, и первое, что я увидел, это направленный на меня автомат. Я совсем uh, не ожидал, uh, uh, когда мне, uh, собственно, пиарщик сказал, окей, сколько вы хотите за это получить? Я взял конверт, они успокоились. Я потом после интервью, когда мы делали фотосъемку, я их оставил на столе, и никто больше про это не вспоминал. We tracked down Kachenko using information from his former chauffeurs. He's guarded by Alpha Group, former counter-terrorism special forces. They are fought in wars and have state medals. They are armed with rubber bullets. Just before 7 a.m., the guards receive information that he's coming. They get in position. There are five cars. 18 people in the convoy. The cars are fitted with signal blockers with a 200-meter range. The convoy includes armed security. Kachenko travels in the second bulletproof vehicle. 
There's a mobile ambulance with a medic. There's a fourth vehicle blocking the entrance to the complex and a fifth sweeper car. Kachenko had an argument with some Chechen guys in a restaurant. After that, he stepped up his security. Kachenko rushes out, glimpsed for a split second before he's inside the building. His staff bring his things and the drivers park and wait. We often drive him to the Ministry of Economic Development, the Ministry of Natural Resources, the National Space Agency. Also the Russian presidential administration. State gas firm Gazprom. State oil firm Rosneft. State funded VTB Bank. Он участвует уже в этих э, делах, в которых есть интерес российского правительства. Момент на 2014 год он пытался э, представить, э, что у него есть какие-то возможности и что ему не страшно работать в Крыму. Ukraine's spy agency reports that he's helping the Russian side in the conflict in Ukraine. He's running some of the biggest coal, oil, and gas companies in annexed Crimea and areas controlled by Russian separatists. Он стал использоваться для поставок горючего и энергоснабжения в Луганскую и Донецкую народные республики. In most countries, you have the government, you have criminals, and you have businessmen. In Russia, all of those distinctions have effectively disappeared. It's the interest of Russia to destroy Ukraine from inside. It's against the interest of Kremlin for Ukraine to succeed in anti-corruption. Through the quick pace deal, we've uncovered a plot to profit from the billions stolen by the clan surrounding former Ukrainian president Viktor Yanukovych. A baby-faced billionaire used dozens of lawyers, seemingly to turn frozen assets into clean money. Our evidence was confirmed by one of the buyers of QuickPace. It was one of the businessmen from the ex-government, yeah. Sergei Kirchenko. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it was exactly. Kirchenko. Yeah. For Onyshenko, buying assets stolen in a grand corruption case is just another day at the office. So there is like kind of business that uh, you can buy cheap and try to, how to say, uh, to fix the problem, to, to make the money. It's about to come. When I revealed that we had the quick pace document, Onoshenko denied that the deal went ahead. It was like normal business. But this one has not happened, yeah? We didn't buy, yeah? You didn't buy that? No. They wanted to sell us assets which was already frozen. They gave us very good discount, but then we checked. It was like uh, impossible to enforce this activity. They may not yet have made money, but our evidence directly contradicts Onoshenko's account that the deal did not go ahead. Official documents record a change of ownership of QuickPace. A lawyer in Cyprus said the sale had happened. The client sold it, yeah. I remember it because it was an August closing. Ukraine's anti-corruption bureau also confirmed the sale. Onishenko and the Russian businessman Fuchs bought it. So it never no, happened? Never happened, yeah. At the offices of Ukraine's anti-corruption bureau, a powerful politician with his entourage has arrived to complain. The millionaire politician had just learned that he was under investigation. 
якби я тут сидів на вашому кріслі, я б підписав би рука не тронула. А ви червонієте, ви потієте, ви бледнієте і ви худаєте. The argument all streamed live on national television. This is Ukraine's corruption fight. Wealthy politicians versus Nazar Holodnitsky, the young new anti-corruption prosecutor. В казний політик протилаштував шоу, цирк, зібрав з собою ще близько десятка народних депутатів. І ви, на жаль, вибачте за нашу країну, ви стали свідком цирку, який відбувався. Про приховання від українців мільярдних статків. Я не в парламенті, я в рідній Україні. Ми вивчаємо олд-традиційний корупційний систем. Стали спеціальним антикорупцією. Трайно зробити все можливо, щоб відбувати цю нову агенцію. Я голосував за закон. Якщо ви питаєте, наскільки багато тиску, якщо ви вважаєте його на вагу кілограмами, то я не знаю, там вже за тонни перейде. The Anti-Corruption Bureau is drowning in paperwork, and its case against Onoshenko is falling apart. What chances do you think there are of seeing Mr. Onoshenko behind bars? It's like a dog in a cage. We, the prosecutors, we do everything to make sure that he is held So what chance do you think there is that you will ever go to prison? I don't know. It's, it's like we say in Ukraine that nobody is sure from the prison, yeah? Ukraine's anti-corruption chiefs console themselves by saying they've seized Onoshenko's private jet. Збрігається так, бо це повинні збрігатися речі від докази. На аеродромі одному не можуть кати де, але збрігається, збрігається, скажем так. But even that appears to be an illusion. We track down the jet sitting at Luton Airport in the UK. It was sold in March last year for $25 million. Today, it's for charter to the super-rich, costing around $30,000 an hour. Did they seize one of your private jets? No, 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 this is bull yeah. There is no, they seized nothing from me, nothing, zero, yeah? For its people, now the poorest in Europe, the Ukrainian tragedy plays on. Я розумію, що всі хочуть, знаєте, суди Лінча, повішених корупціонерів на центральній площі столиці. Так не може бути. Олександр Онешенко has now been granted asylum in Spain. Павел Фукс is stepping up his investments in Ukraine, buying gas companies and possibly a bank. Sergei Kuchenko has London lawyers working to overturn his sanctions and unfreeze his money. Everyone gets away with it. If you look at the amount of money that's stolen in developing countries globally every year, it's estimated at a trillion dollars, with a T. How much is recovered? Out of every thousand dollars that's stolen, 25 cents. Імітація, і нічого в нас не йде. І корупція у нас ще більше стала, ніж була при Януковичі. У нас не було крові перший Майдан 2004 рік. Ось, і тому просто зараз я не бачу виходу. 